is Jay Z is getting richer and richer, and he's wearing less and less shit that look rich. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody notice that? Hove is the one that's taking these meetings with other wealthy people. Yeah. And you keep going in these rooms with these people trying to look like money. No, you've got to sound like money and think <laughs> like money. My God. Because all that shit is a bluff to, to these people. Wealthy doesn't have to prove to anybody that they're wealthy. Kirby, I think we've talked about this before. I know we have in person many times. I don't know about on this channel, but this is so true. A lot of people think that because of what they see on TV or social media, that once they make a little bit of money or, and it could just be a day job, they get a raise, they get a promotion, whatever. They try to imitate people that they are seeing on social media, what they're seeing on TV, thinking that that's how you have to act or look to be in that class. But they're only looking at the celebrities or the, the famous people. But then when you get to people like Jay-Z, and I understand Jay-Z is a celebrity, but he started hanging around Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, you know, and started to actually kind of imitate these people who are the true wealthy of the world. So what are your thoughts on this? First off, I was this guy. I was this guy. I was that guy who thought that. And it was because of my upbringing. I mean, I grew up with nothing, and I thought that, Especially in the hood, in, the, in every urban neighborhood or hood in America, the the show of wealth, you know, you see the drug dealers, they got the fancy cars, they got the jewelry, they got the, you know, wads of money in their pocket and things of that nature. And that's that was our view of what wealth was. Again, I'm a little older, so we didn't have a social media growing up. And then one thing that happened is social media came around and it just perpetuated that same thing, no matter if it's in urban neighborhoods or anywhere. I mean, suburbia is the same thing. Social media made it look like, oh, when you have money, you have to show the world you have money. And um, so when I got my first big paycheck, that's what I did. I went to go buy, you know, diamonds and everything. And it's a funny story about that. So one day I'm meeting up with a, a friend of mine in Orlando and she was bringing her significant other who I knew that he was I knew he was well off I didn't know how much well off at the time I was just meeting him but I knew he you know shaking and moved and did things and then so I'm getting ready I'm getting ready <clears throat> and I'm about to throw on every every piece of jewelry I got I was I, my plan was to go out there and look like Mr. T and then I was sitting there in the mirror, and then I just thought about it. I was like, do you really want to go out here like the hood superstar? And then we wasn't meeting about business or anything like that. It was just meeting. And then so that was like really the start of it was, like you will understand when I say the start of it when I get there. But um, so I take it all off. I just put on my normal bracelets, you know, crazy T-shirt, and just some shorts and some shoes. And then we went. And then I go I go meet up with the friend and, and her significant other. And he's dressed normal, shorts, you know, polo shirt, no jury, no jury in sight. And then me, and then my friend was trying to get, get me to talk about what I'm doing. And, you know, I was just, you know, I was not being flashy about it. I was just like, yeah, you know, I invest, you know, I do this. This is my mindset. This is before I had any real estate or anything. And then come to find out this guy's worth nine figures. This guy's worth nine figures. And then he just started talking, started mentoring me, started, you know, giving me ideas and concepts. And and then I, I talked to him about, you know, two or three years later, and then he was like, and then I just wanted to pick his brain to see if there's anything that I could do. And he was like, no, you're doing everything, you're doing everything right. And then he told me, he was like, I thought you was going to come and you was going to be like one of those, you know, over the top guys, you know, wearing jewelry, trying to impress. And then I was like, and then, and then I, and then I ended up telling him, I was like, actually, that's what I was going to do. Cause you know, his significant other didn't ever tell me about him. But I knew he was doing, you know, well off. And then I was like, but some just told me don't do it. He was like, yeah, you don't. He was like, when people show up 
and they have all that stuff on and come into the rooms that I'm in, we know they're trying to hide flaws in them. So they wear this stuff to make people think that they're rich. And then that's when I came up with the saying, I'd rather be rich than look it. And then now you see, that's why I always wear t-shirts and shorts no matter where we go. You know, we go into, you know, fancy restaurants and I'm still in the same thing. And people look like, what the heck? Because I don't have nothing, I don't have nothing to show you. I don't have nothing to prove to you. And if I'm trying to prove it to you, the only people that will be impressed by that stuff is people that can't afford it. And if you want to be in rooms with movers and shakers, they can afford it and they ain't wearing none of it because they can afford it. Why do they care? Why do they care what other people think their money is? They know what it is. And that's all that matters. And that was that was some that was that was a very a very big life lesson or a big, very big mistake that I was gonna make. Because imagine if I did show up and I had all that stuff on and he just looked at me and was just like, Oh yeah, he just another another dude from the hood. He ain't, he ain't got a clue. I wouldn't have built the relationships that I did. And from there on out, I I don't, I don't got a wedding ring, nothing. I just bracelets, t-shirt, shorts, all of that, and that's and that's really what really started. Yeah, I like I like this topic a lot. It was funny because the the day you had invited me to um, World of Beer was it to like first yeah. sit down and talk. Yeah. The only thing mm -hmm. I had that was like nice was like a nice watch. And I was like, should I even wear this? <laughs> and I remember like thinking the same thing. But really, my, my thought in the end was like, I mean, I understood. I was like, I was like, this guy is worth way more than me. I don't think I'm going to impress him at all. I was like, so I don't. So, I, I mean, I just didn't. I remember I just went there like looking normal. I didn't put on a collar shirt or nothing. I'm trying to look all fancy. I just went there. Good with their normal because but that was that was my thought process was like why would i try to impress someone who's obviously who obviously has way more than me and the only thing especially i could think of was like um a friend of my mother uh her and her husband own i've told you about them but for the audience they they own their own company and they own a bunch of real estate and i know the like the market capital of those companies is in the billions but mm -hmm. when you meet when you meet them, I mean, her husband's always dressed up nice because he's always at the office or whatever. But the wife, when you meet her out in public, she's just got sweatpants and a T-shirt just looking normal. I mean, there's no need to, to be trying to look like that. I think that, as you have explained very well before, the only reason why these people do this on social media or on TV is for attention because the attention brings them money it's different in that aspect and they have partnerships with all these brands that they're wearing. So it's not like they're coming out of their pocket and blowing tons of money because they're getting the money right back from all these deals and partnerships that they have. And so it's a, it's a different mentality than from someone that admires these people and then just wants to look like it. And they actually have to come out of their pocket and then they're supporting these companies that are the true rich that don't even dress like it. I mean, you look at the owner of like Louis Vuitton. I haven't seen that guy wear a single Louis Vuitton. <laughs> like he just wears a suit. Like I, I don't know. I mean, maybe he has wore Louis Vuitton. I don't know, but I, I haven't seen it. It's just, it, it's uh, it's very interesting to see. The true wealthy, they wear basic clothes. I mean, you could you could see Kirby and I out in public. Our outfits probably combined worth about fifty seven dollars. That's that. That's about it. <laughs> that's about it, man. But yeah, and that, and it's it's true. It's true in the aspect of these people wear it. The only people, well, let's use it, let's use it a different way. When you wear that stuff, the only people you're impressing is people that can't afford it. Right. You're you become a target for the people that can't afford it. So if you get caught in the wrong neighborhood where likely to get robbed, shot, and killed, for what? Just to show people that you have money? I can walk in any neighborhood in America, any neighborhood in the world, because I haven't done it. And I just look like a normal person. They walk past me, I don't know. He he looked like he ain't got no money. We ain't even worried about him. Not knowing how many how much money I got in the bank or whatever. I just look like a normal person. And 
And and that's the thing, and you see, it, especially in these urban neighborhoods, you get this stuff, and then the only thing you do is breed jealousy. Jealousy breeds people trying to rob you. So I mean, especially look at all the shooting, killings, and robberies that have happened in especially like California, because people rappers from other other areas of the cities come there with jury, flashing jury. You just become what they use now. I'm show you my age. You become an op. You know, you just become somebody that's that's just a target for everybody else. And I always try to tell that to my son is understand you become a target. Don't talk about what what I do, what your dad do, or what you plan on doing. I mean, you can talk about what you plan on doing, but don't talk about the family business just to everybody. Because you become a target. You can become a target from jealous friends, jealous family members. Hell, even women that's like, oh, well, he get this, or he gonna get that, or he's doing this, or his father's doing this. That you can, that they plan on using it as a motive to get stuff out of you. Because the people that don't got it, that's too lazy to go get it for themselves, they come to take it. I mean, just think of the political landscape here. Every time you see a politician on one side of the aisle get, get up there, they're always talking about taking the money from the people who got it to give to the people that don't got it. That is the motive operandi for a whole political party in this nation. So if that's if that's in the political fear, the leaders of this world thinking like that, what do you think the 9, 10, 15, 18-year-old, uneducated 18-year-old that don't have any mentorship on going to get it yourself? Oh, you got to go take it. So if you put yourself out there, then you put yourself out there. But it's your fault. I mean, yeah, should they not be doing it? No, but they're a product of the environment that they're in. So if you really have it, why do you have to show somebody? I mean, I've I've said this to a lot of people because they always look at the cars that drive or whatever, and they'd be like, oh, man, if I had what you had, I'd do this. And I'd be like, well, I'd rather, I'd rather be rich than look rich. I'd rather have the money then look like I have it. Because most of the people that look like they have it, they're really broke. Their only satisfaction in life is to have people that can't afford it or to make people believe that they have money. That's the goal. But when you have it, it don't matter what people believe because you just know. But I'll leave it right there before I start getting all the hate comments in, the, in there I, saying, oh, you can't tell people how to dress. I think the funniest thing too is that people think that like say the mentality we have it's like they think that we we are holding ourselves back from those things i have no desire for it and the other day someone had asked me they were like so what are you gonna do like what car are you gonna buy when you're worth like 10 million and i was like i was like i mean honda accords are nice <laughs> they were like your dream car is a honda accord I was like, hey, man, it's nice. I was like, it's just, I was like, but think, I, I told him, I'm like, think of all the luxury cars, the luxury cars and the sports cars. I was like, I just need something that's reliable, that goes long distance and just does the job. I was like, I know I could get good mileage out of the car and it's a reliable car. And it, Honda is known for making reliable cars. I was like, I was like, I mean, you could say, okay, Rolls Royce. I was like, I think the interior is ugly. I was like, and then on top of that, the amount it costs. And then they had mentioned like a Bugatti. I was like, dude, it costs like, what is it? Like 30,000 just to change the oil. I'm like, I'm not trying to spend money like that. I mean, think about it. I mean, just think of how wasteful the money is. You spending $30,000 and I'm and everybody can spend their money their own, their own way. But my look at it is you spending $30,000 for oil change if that's the cost. It's people in our families that only make 30000 a year. What's, what sense does that make? And then so we buy the car. And then let's just say, just for kind of everybody come over and say, ooh and ah. Or they ask you to come pull up so they can impress their friends with it. Ooh and ah. The only satisfaction you getting out of it is people saying ooh and ah. You're not building business relationships because you got it. You got it. The only thing you're building is one of your friends. Like, hey, hey, Alex, come come through, come through with your with your whip, come through with your Bugatti. The next thing you know, you're pulling up, you somewhere in the Jeffries Projects in Detroit. And then the only thing you got left, you sitting there standing in your drawers because they didn't rob and took everything from you. Why? Why put yourself in that? And I know people gonna say, oh, well, those are string cases. 
That's what we avoid, the stream of cases. Why even attempt to put yourself in that situation when you don't have to? I mean, it's it's not it's not even a thought process for me to be like, oh, let's go buy a, a Corvette or a Bugatti so people can look at it. Like, even when I see them on the road, I just look like, damn, that's an expensive car payment. I don't look at it as, ooh, I want one of those. Me, I mean, Alex, you know, when I when I drive, I drive in complete silence, unless it's a sports game on or something. And then if I'm driving in complete silence for a long time, then I'll cut on some music. But I, I don't like noise. So those things loud and all that. It's not even it's not even a perfect for me. Give me my little four cylinder. Hum, it's going down the road. That's all I need. That's that's all I need. I mean, it's it's funny that people, the people that don't even have a hundred thousand dollars in their bank. It's going to crap on this video and say, oh, you can't tell people what to do and how to spend money. I'm not trying to. But the funny part is, is Mark Zuckerberg, he's up there in 100 billions and he's driving a Ford EV car or something like that. He drives something very, very inconspicuous. But then, of course, the people to bring in race and all this other stuff and all that, it, it don't matter. And sorry, America, no, I'm not trying to be white. I'm just trying to make sense of it. It's just, why am I flexing for people that can't afford it? That's all. With all that being said, guys, if you liked the video, hit the like button, leave us a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.